It's Mrs. Mafuchi, and it's time to look at heat energy. Let's consider the two different types of energy. We're going to look at potential energy and kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is defined as energy in motion. It's the energy associated with moving things, like moving water, or wind, or a roller coaster racing down a hill. Potential energy, on the other hand, is energy that is stored. It's the capacity to do something, like gasoline in a gas tank in your car, or water behind a dam and the roller coaster just at the top of the hill before it races down. Potential energy is the capacity to do work. Now in chemistry, this has everything to do with chemical bonding. The more chemical bonds within a substance, the greater the potential energy. Kinetic energy, on the other hand, is energy in motion. It's associated with the speed of the particles making up a sample of matter. The faster the movement of particles, the greater the kinetic energy. And the higher the temperature, the faster the particles move. Temperature is defined as a measure of the average kinetic energy of a substance. As temperature increases, molecular motion increases, therefore the kinetic energy of the particles increase. Let's consider the three temperature scales, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. In chemistry, we will be looking at both the Celsius and the Kelvin temperature scales. The Kelvin scale is also known as the absolute scale. Absolute zero, or zero Kelvin, is the lowest possible temperature. At zero Kelvin, the kinetic energy is equal to zero and all motion stops. Notice that Kelvin does not have a degree sign in front of it. We would never say something like 100 degrees Kelvin. We would just say 100 Kelvin or 100 Kelvins. When we look at these thermometers, we see that the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to approximately 273 Kelvin. The boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius, is equivalent to 373 Kelvin. In order to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you take the Celsius temperature and add 273 to it. Well, what's the difference between temperature and heat energy? Let's look at Max. Poor Max. Look at him there sitting in his little swimming pool. Poor Max. He's had a hard day at work. He's decided to relax by sitting in his swimming pool and drinking a tall glass of water. The water in the pool is 25 degrees Celsius, and his glass of water is also at 25 degrees Celsius. He is a happy man. Let's look at the first question. Well, how do the temperatures of the pool water and the glass of water compare? Notice that the water in the pool is 25 degrees and his glass of water is also at 25 degrees. They are both at the same temperature. They both have the same kinetic energy. But how do the heats compare? For example, which has more heat energy, the pool of water or the glass of water? In order to answer this question, 
I'm going to pose another one. Which would require more energy to heat up to 35 degrees Celsius? The pool water or the glass of water? Even though the temperature of the pool is 25 degrees and the glass of water is also at 25 degrees, it would take more energy to heat up the water in the pool to 35 degrees. That's because there is more mass in the pool of water than there is in the glass of water. Energy is related to both temperature and mass. It has to do with the speed of particles and how many particles are moving. While temperature is measured in degrees Celsius or in Kelvins, heat is measured in calories or joules. There are 4.184 joules in one calorie. A calorie is defined as the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one Celsius degree. Let's now look at conservation of energy. It states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. There are endothermic reactions which absorb energy from the surroundings. In an endothermic reaction, the temperature of the surroundings decreases, the energy decreases, and the temperature of the system increases, or the energy of the system increases. In an endothermic reaction, delta H is positive. Exothermic reactions release energy to the surroundings. That means that the temperature of the surroundings increases and the temperature of the system decreases. In exothermic reactions, delta H is negative. Let's consider the average temperature in San Francisco. Notice that it goes from 57, 60, 62, 63, 64, 67, 67, 68, 70, 69, 63, 57. Notice that the temperature in San Francisco is very moderate. Well, now let's look at the temperatures in Stockton. Oh my goodness, we start at 56 and we go all the way up to 94 and then back to 57. There's a greater temperature change in Stockton than there is in San Francisco. In other words, why is it hotter in Stockton in the summer than it is in San Francisco? That's because San Francisco is by the ocean. Different materials store different amounts of heat energy. For example, water has a high capacity to retain heat energy. Water takes about 30 times longer to heat up than gold does. It also means that it would take 30 times longer for the water to cool, to lose energy, than the gold would. Specific heat is the amount of heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance one Celsius degree. The larger the specific heat, the harder it is for a substance to gain or lose energy and change temperature. Water has a high specific heat. That means water tends to have a moderating effect on climate. It takes a lot for water to change temperature. That is why cities on an ocean have a moderate climate compared to those far from water. Look at that fish. He's happy. He loves the specific heat capacity of water.